Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use hierarchical regression models in SPSS uh, to use observational data to estimate a causal effect size. This is an example of what's called a quasi-experiment. Um, the idea of a quasi-experiment is you're going to use observational or non-experimental or non-randomly assigned data to try to estimate how big the effect of a true experiment would be. This is important because observational studies tend to have very biased uh, outcomes. They tend to tell you that things make a much bigger difference than they actually do. Uh, however, you don't always have the time or it's not always possible to do a true randomized experiment. So quasi-experimental methods can be very handy. The one that I'm going to use right here, the hierarchical regression models, is sort of the cheapskate version of a quasi-experiment because it's the it's the one that makes the fewest uh, demands on the researcher. But I want to show you very quickly how it works. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using the example of a study uh, some students of mine did a little while ago in which they tried to look at the effect of similarity in a couple, same food, same humor, so on and so forth, and how that have contributed to their perceived quality of marriage. Uh, we did this with a questionnaire. People answered, they basically said how good they thought their marriage was. They rated the, how similar they were to their spouse on a bunch of uh, variables. And they also filled out things like age, their gender, how long they'd been married, if they had kids, some personality variables, open, conscientious, agreeable, and so on some religion questions, and uh, having close friends for social support. And the reason for this is, assuming that people who are similar on a number of things also have uh, report higher levels of satisfaction in their marriage, it may also because be because that they're agreeable, or because they have uh, good friends, or whatever. And we want to try to rule out the effect of these variables right here, and we want to remove them so we can look at the association of just these similarity questions on this one, the marriage uh, quality. The way we do this is in um, SPSS, is to take the data, let's see here, the data looks like this. I've got my little spreadsheet here with the data. And what I've done is two things. First off, I've already done uh, the analyses. The first thing I did is I got correlation coefficients because I have this question here, that's my outcome, best marriage, and I want the individual correlation of every variable with it. And you can go down here and you can see this one's the correlation coefficient of age with best marriage. This is the probability value. The sig two-tailed is the probability value. is 0.492. Normally that needs to be less than 0.05 to be considered statistically significant. Like this one right here, it's a lot less than 0.05. Uh, this tells us that uh, older people have more kids, which isn't surprising. The last one is just the sample size. And I use that as a baseline. Um, I imported that into Excel. And you see here, this first column right here consists of correlation coefficients of each variable on its own correlated with self-rated quality of marriage. It goes from 0 to 1, can be positive or negative, and then I've used highlighted to indicate ones that were statistically significant. The ones in the very light green are a little wishy-washy because you normally have to be less than 0.5. These are less than 0.1, so it's, it's not as rigorous as normal, but we had a small sample, only 63 people, so we're going with what we got. These darker ones are uh, significant at the standard 0.05 level. Um, and so you see, for instance, that um, female is negatively correlated. So men tended to relate to rate their marriages as higher quality than women did. People who were open, people who were extroverted, people who were agreeable, stable, who had higher levels of extrinsic personal and intrinsic religiosity, all gave themselves as you know better marriage. On the other hand, extrinsic social and how often people went and having close friends had no relationship, as did uh, years married or age. They had no effect. They had no reliable association with best marriage. Now the similarity ones, it's important to note that similarity on humor uh, was significantly correlated. The more similar, the higher rated quality of marriage. Same with uh, movies and TV, but not interestingly food, politics, physical activities, vacations, or animals. Strangely, uh, having similar attitudes about the use of texting and cell phones was also associated. But you see, we've got all these other things that also contributed to it. And the problem is that these variables down here might be associated with these ones and want to remove their effect. The way I did this was by running several regression models. Um, now, the command in SPSS is pretty complicated. 
Well, actually, it's not horrible. This is just what it looks like when it's in syntax. But I mean, look how much printout I get from this. Do 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 do. You will see, by the way, we have thousands of numbers there, and I have taken just the ones that matter and imported them into where I want. But let me start by looking right here. This says that I first entered just the number of kids, years, married, and age. Just basic demographics for a person to see how that associated with the quality of their marriage. And when I come, the, that's these ones right here. See? Age, female, years, married, and kids. And these are the correlation coefficients. Actually, they're beta coefficients. They're regression coefficients, but they're standardized, so they're like correlations. They have a mean of zero. They have a... St well... The point is they go from 0 to 1 that can be positive or negative, and a, uh, a higher absolute value indicates a stronger association. And uh, as with the correlations, I've highlighted the ones that were statistically significant. These two are sort of weaselly. They, you know, they're kind of weak, but they're there. Um, and again, the men tended to rate higher marriage, and this time years married worked into it. Look, the number changed substantially by going into this uh, multiple regression model. Now, this one down here is the R squared for those four variables together. How well do they predict the outcome in best marriage? And the answer is they predict 0.100. Um, they, they predict 10% of the variance. That is, if you know a person's score on these four things, uh, if you have an entire sample and you know their scores, you can predict 10% of the variance in the outcome of best marriage. It's not a lot. It's not statistically significant. It's not highlighted. And so I did this again. Um, by the way, those numbers came from right there. See, that's the R squared right there. That's the one I'm using. And you can also see this one is not significant. It's 0.184. This is for the entire model. It's the same 0.184. But when I add some other variables, you see here I've added up to eight, and I add extroverted, conscious, agreeable, open, and stable, the big five personality factors. Then the R squared goes from 1 to 275. That's a change of 0.175. And that change right here is statistically significant. Also, the entire model is now statistically significant. And that shows up in my uh, thing right here. See, there's the 275, that's the, that these variables together, these nine variables together can predict 27.5% of the variance in the outcome. And that's a statistically significant, it's, it's different from zero, it's not chance, and that that improvement is also statistically significant. Then I go and add the religion variables, and it bumps up to 405, that it can explain over 40% of the variance, that is also statistically significant. And that's an improvement of 12.9% of significant. Then I add just one variable here, whether they have close friends, because social supports can have a lot to do with the person's perceived quality of life. Again, the R squared you, right here, the proportion of variance explained, you see it keeps going up, but the improvement is not significant. And then I put a little marker here because the variables I'm really interested in are these similarity ones. And when I throw all of those into the equation, these are their coefficients. And what I get here is I can now explain over 55% of the variance in best marriage. That is, if I know a person's, if I know the scores on all of these variables, I can predict over half of the variance on this one, which is really good. However, what's interesting is that this jump of 0.14 is not statistically significant. Now, there's something worth mentioning here. This jump right here is bigger than this jump. This one, the 129 is significant, but the 140 over here is not. The reason for that is degrees of freedom, which I'm not showing here. But the idea here is when you have a relatively small sample, but you're using, and we have a relatively small sample with only 63 scores, but you have a lot of variables to predict it. In this case, uh, what do I have? I've got like, you know, I've got over 20 that I'm using to predict it. Um, you're going to get a lot of chance associations. And, and so this improvement is seen because we've used up the degrees of freedom and there's not as much room for natural variance. It's not significant. However, something that's worth noting here is look at this. When we originally looked at the individual correlations of the uh, similarity variables with best marriage, look, we got We've got one, two, three, four that were statistically significant. On the other hand, when we come over here, only one of them is significant anymore. And strangely, it's whether people have the same humor. All the others dropped out because of the context here. 
Also, because within a multiple regression, because of this degrees of freedom thing, you have to have sort of a higher level to be statistically significant. But you see how these numbers really sort of bottomed out. A lot of them went a lot closer to zero. This went from 422 to 165, from 191 to 1017. So the only variable left of similarity that still explains after we've looked at all of these things is uh, same humor. And so our the point here is that we're trying to look at whether having similarities in a couple can contribute directly to perceived quality of marriage. The answer appears to be yes, a little bit, but only similarity in humor. And I'm not sure why that would be the case in the other ones. It's a self-reported questionnaire, so we got to be a little cautious about how we interpret these things. But that's the basic idea, that by looking at these equations first and then looking at the changes and whether those changes are statistically significant, in the proportion of variance explained, or the R squared, we can try to estimate a causal effect size, and I hope that helps. Thanks.